We are Fran and Rich. And for the last six years, we've been living and travelling aboard our narrowboats on the inland waterways of Britain. We've been travelling with our two companions, Jess and Archie. Now we also have Percy, the motorhome, to further extend our adventures. So why not tag along and see the UK through our eyes? Last time, Rich went travelling to pick up Percy the motorhome. We took him to Wales and I even got to drive. Those hills in the distance are Brecon Beacons National Park and we are heading right to the southern and southern tip of there. It looks lovely. The road, not so lovely. <laughs> you can hear every bump rattling through the van, even though we've got everything tied down, we've got bumps and rattles, but ahead of us looking beautiful. Well, we just had to pull in just to show you this view. Unbelievable. <laughs> we just turned off of the uh, B road onto this road, which is supposed to be the wider approach to the parking space. So I'm really glad we took this rather than the narrow version. <laughs> um, yeah, quite a bleak landscape up here. To friend. I'm just writing a travel journal for Percy. I've treated myself to a nice little notebook and uh, we've kept a travel journal on the boat for six years just recording where we've been and what we've done so we thought it'd be a great idea to do it for the van and I'm just recording the miles that we've traveled, how much we've spent on fuel, where we're parking and a few little notes about the parking spot to see if it's worth going back to, um, if it's noisy, quiet, whatever. So, and then there's a little journal about just what we've done each day. It's just our record, but I think it'll be worth doing. We always look in the journal on the boat, don't we? Say, oh, where were we a year ago? And we're absolutely gobsmacked when we find out it's been a year <laughs> since we were somewhere. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. There's so many places that you remember, but it's also good for the, for the boat because you can't always remember good mooring spots along a canal. We can go back and check. So, yeah, so that's a little job for me this afternoon while we're resting up. This view is not too shabby though, is it? God. It's amazing. It's a lovely park Absolutely up. Absolutely stunning. Looking at over to the Brecon Beacons National Park and I've got sheep in the foreground and there's some really pretty mushrooms. There's a little walk to do later, I think. Mm. But this is what we wanted. This is what, isn't it, today? Really wanted to just rest. Kick back. Yesterday was um, busy, wasn't it? Mm. Really busy. It was a bit frantic, wasn't it? You were cooking looking after the dogs, sorting the boat out while I was yomping across Warwickshire to pick Percy up. But um, it's been worth it though, isn't it? This is great. This is absolutely wonderful. It seems to be working out quite well, Rich. It takes in best part of the day, really, to go and get the van from where we are. But in the meantime, I was able to get better prepared to come away than we ever have been. We don't want to be relying on convenience food and stuff while we're out and about. So we've come away with cooked meals and cakes that I've brought or cake and um, I think that's a that's a worthwhile thing to do just mm. to come prepared so that we are not reliant on uh, little local shops but the time you park up you don't always want to then think about going shopping and stuff so we're gradually getting to grips with it this new lifestyle aren't we last night's park up was good wasn't it in, in Ross and Wye just on the edge of the town in uh, on a park in a park but um Archie woke us up with a start, didn't he, last <laughs> night at about, I don't know, one o'clock in the morning, yeah, was it? Something just yeah. barking, and he never barks. No. The only time he barks is when you let him off the boat and he's all excited. Yeah. But uh, 
he absolutely would not stop barking then he was growling for ages wasn't he so Real proper deep barks wasn't it <laughs> i don't know what he was doing i think he got his nose in between the curtains and could see outside and there's rabbits everywhere on this uh, park up wasn't there and it's taken us a few trips for them to find their bedroom isn't it mm. it's like they were down in the kitchen area but then if we get up in the night we can't move because there's dogs <laughs> there so archie now sleeps on my passenger seat in the on my passenger seat i do drive the as passenger well, seat the passenger seat and jess's bed snuggles up in between them but i do think he put his nose between the curtains and could see outside yeah so yeah that was the only thing that disturbed our night's sleep and it yeah. was cold it was apparently only four degrees but we were really snuggly and warm oh, it was warm on here wasn't it yeah. we didn't have the heating on last night whilst we were eating and just sitting sitting chatting yeah but um had the heating on this morning for about 20 minutes half an hour just to yeah. take the edge off it was fabulous wasn't it we were a little bit reluctant um to use too much gas because this fan came with a gas bottle, but we don't know how much was in it, do we? No. <laughs> and apparently it's not the done thing to carry a spare gas bottle around with you because of the weight. They're too heavy. Um, so I guess as time goes on, we would know when we're getting low on gas. And we've got a little spare camping cooker that we could use if yeah. we do run out. But yeah, we're just waiting for it. Once it's run out and we've refilled, we'll know where we are, won't we? <laughs> be a good idea of how long these things last. But yeah, so... This man-made landscape reminds me about the book you've bought today. Oh, yes. So while we were in Ross on Wire, I wasn't going to buy any new books because I have got plenty of books to read. But this was a signed copy, which makes me want to read it. So this is by Guy Shrub Sock. Sh I always have trouble. Shrub Socks. Shrub Soul. And he wrote a book I read once called um, Who Owns England, which got me very, very angry. You were apoplectic the whole time you were reading it, weren't you? Yeah. Huffing and puffing and, oh, putting the book down because you couldn't read it anymore for a while. So I'm going to put myself through it all over again. And this one is about who are the true guardians of the countryside and what is happening out there. So it's going to be an interesting read. Mm. I'll try not to get too angry or no. I'll try and be quiet about it if I do. And then Fat chance. We might talk about it on a future podcast. We'll see. But yeah, so it's an afternoon of reading and writing and are you going to do editing? You've got a little bit of work you might do. Yeah, I've got to do a bit of editing, but I've got to summons up the enthusiasm for it. I'm quite happy doing nothing. The, yeah, and what was that quote we saw oh, this morning? Oh, yeah, Who was it? Great Show Marks? Yeah, was yeah. It? What did he say? He said, um, the trouble with doing nothing is that you never know when you're finished. <laughs> but that's us today, I think. So let's start then. <laughs> Well, on any other day, if we were on the boat or anywhere, we had a view like that from our window, we'd go, wow. That's the view from my window. But check the view out from Fran's window. Look at that. Incredible. Well, I've moved the van to the end of the spot here. It hasn't made any difference. It's We're still on the wonk, but we'll just put up with it I think well we turned around and moved the van back to the original car park because we realized it faces east and boy are we ever glad we did Nice view, but uh, had a few oiks last night in their car. They weren't noisy or rowdy or anything, but they've gone and left all their rubbish behind. So I'm going to take it upon myself to pick it all up. We've managed to find ourselves a canal on our travels. Yeah, you can take the travellers away from their boat, but you can't keep them away from a canal. <laughs> Something like that, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, we're on the Monmouth and Brecon Canal in here in South Wales, and it is stunning. 
Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah. Um, narrow, beautiful scenery like you've never seen from a canal. Just lovely. It's amazing. And uh, it's a landlocked canal, so we can't get our boat to it unless we have it lifted out of the water and brought here. It's 36 miles long, and I think there's quite a few locks on here. It must be given the uh, hills that are about. But it's absolutely stunning. Archie is back in his element, like a couple of days away from the canal in the van, and uh, he's been straight in the water, absolutely like his home again. We keep getting questions asked about uh, our life now. Now we've bought Percy the motorhome. Are we getting bored? Are we getting tired of the canals? Well, no, we're not. We've come and found one out to, <laughs> to explore. But we live on the canals. That's our life, you know, and uh, it's our home. And it's nice to be able to do something different. Yeah, and that's all it is, you know. We just want to travel even further and see yeah. things like our stopover last night was absolutely immense. Yeah. So um, that's all. And we're still going to be living and working on the canal uh, for the foreseeable future. We have already within five minutes thought that this could be a nice canal to retire to. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It'd be beautiful. It just... So yeah, maybe we'll uh, spend the last of our pension fund and bring the boat here. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet though. Not, Not yet. yet. Lots of people ask us where's the best place for us to go cruising for a holiday in the canal system in the UK? Well, you could do worse than this, folks. It's absolutely stunning. Come on. Well, we're on our way up to Eagle's Nest. We're just outside Chepstow in the Wire Valley and uh, it's a bit of a climb apparently. It's 365 steps or something like that, Fran. It's one step for every day of the year, but we're doing it in hopefully an hour is yeah. what the signpost says. But yeah. we're not timing ourselves because we're old. What is the time anyway? I don't know. <laughs> what is time? <laughs> so yeah, it promises some spectacular views once we get at the top and it's a beautiful day, nice and sunny. It looks pretty clear, so uh, let's hope we'll be rewarded for our efforts. Steps begin. One brought sticks to help us on the way down mainly and what we haven't brought is the dogs because uh, they've done a lot of walking and they've both slowed right down um, so yeah they're, they're van keeping for us isn't this amazing it is amazing there's no other word for it, is it really? You run out of adjectives. Uh, okay. Gnarly old root. So we climb those steps up to come back down again. <laughs> I think we'd have already been taking Jess back at this point. There's no way Jess would have managed this, is there? I wouldn't want to be doing this in the rain. It's uh, slippy enough without being wet. Eagle's Nest is at the top of a steep wooded limestone cliff, about 770 feet high, built in 1828 for the Duke of Beaufort to extend the walking paths network around his estate. That's got the old heart rate going. It's an absolute magical place, isn't it? Oh, it's, it feels so ancient. And we, we think this path was probably built, you know, a couple of hundred years ago for people to get up. But the woodland is fantastic. And we saw people over the last day or so coming up here with ropes and helmets to do rock climbing. 
there's a sheer cliff face is all above us. But um nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> we're happy to walk. Well, I guess we're about a third of the way up, I think. Maybe a bit more, I don't know. But uh it's not as arduous as I was expecting, but uh it's still a challenging walk. Got to have sure feet. Boy, this is steep. <laughs> There's a real big step behind you, Fran. Behind me? Behind me, rather. Uh. Yeah, well, no way the dogs would have done these steps, <laughs> that's for sure. Blimey. What? what do you think's bent that? Look at that. A fall, I think. Maybe. I don't know. Ooh. Oh, wow. That is some view. In the distance, you've got the Prince of Wales Bridge, where we were yesterday, and there's Chepstow Racecourse. So now we've done the 365 steps, just another 200 yards ahead to the Eagle's Nest viewpoint. So let's see what all this was about then. <laughs> Look at that, I'll beat you to it. <laughs> I need those on to see. How fab is that? That is amazing, isn't it? Wonderful. Absolutely amazing. Don't look down. There's been a couple just popped down and they spent all of 30 seconds looking at the view and they went back again. <laughs> but um, I'm just gobsmacked what, what you know, the nature and what it can do. That river wide meandering all the way down to the Severn, it's absolutely beautiful. And the more you look, the more you see, you know, initially you just see the river, the river wide, the river Severn. But then when you look, you can see Chepstow Castle and I wish we bought binoculars actually, but yeah. You, you just need to sit and absorb it all really it's just wonderful sit for half an hour and just soak it all in yeah so this is why we've bought percy the motorhome is because we, on the canals you can't get to places like this unless you spend a day on the rail network and bus network getting here you know but uh yeah this is just exactly why we've bought percy so yeah. we can get to these yeah. offbeat places and the new phrase in our lives is going to be, if it wasn't for Percy, we wouldn't see this. <laughs> and it's been here um, this 200 years, we think, or so, this walk up to here. How many people have sat here and just enjoyed this? Mm -hmm. Quite a few can feel in these stones. Yeah. They've been a bit yeah. soft, worn, whatever that means. We're lost for words, you can tell. We can't think of the right words for the thing. <laughs> We're out of breath anyway. So it's, uh, we're climbing up here, but it's well worth the effort. Absolutely yeah. well worth the effort. We're going to go down the other way because it's a circular route. So hopefully for your poor old knees, it'll be an easier hike back. Yeah. We'll but see. there's no way. Even Archie would have struggled, I think, coming up here. The metal steps mm. had gaps in them that were big enough for their paws to get caught in. And also, there was a handrail for us on the cliff edge, but nothing to stop a dog falling through. So it really is not one to bring dogs on. Definitely not. Um, 
it's a shame for them, but they'll have a, they've had a nice walk this morning. They'll yeah. have a nice walk later. So. so I think we'll sign off here. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Tell all your friends. Thank you to all the patrons and members to help make this all possible. Yeah. And um, we'll see you on the next travels by Narrowboat or by Percy. See you soon. ta -ra. Um, the more you look, the more you see. And there's um, some writing about the place as well that somebody's written. And it's just... What somebody has written? <laughs> what the f***? <laughs> How convenient. Parking Percy right by the boat. So we can unload Percy with all this stuff back onto the boat and a pile of shopping we've bought as well. Thank you.